Hi, this is Crystal Schoenbrunn with the Pacific Home Group, real estate consultants and realtor team. Today I'm going to be going over what are buyer contingencies? What are they? What do they mean to you? Um, why are they part of the real estate contract? So let's get at it and see what they are. Be sure, by the way, to like and subscribe our channel. We have lots of tips and tricks for buyers and sellers and home tours, lifestyle videos. So it'll be a lot of fun. Let's get at it. about buying a home or maybe you bought one and it's been a long time you don't remember exactly how it goes so today we're gonna go over buyer contingencies what are they and what do they mean to you so when you buy a home um, you will sign a real estate contract with a seller uh, that's basically your binding agreement that tells everybody the terms of you buying a house and all the time frames so as part of that is gonna be your contingencies and so I'm gonna go over some of just the most common contingencies that you're gonna hear of when you're buying a house. So first you might wanna ask yourself, what is a contingency? So it's a part of a contract that basically requires somebody to do something within a certain time frame. Uh, so it keeps the deal moving, keeps the escrow going, and eventually leads to you owning a home at the end. So some of the most common contingencies I'm gonna go over are the ones you're gonna see in most California contracts. Uh, if you're in a different state, they might be different, or there may be a couple of different ones depending on what type of your type of transaction you're part of, um, since real estate is very unique and every deal can be different. Uh, so some of the most common ones will be your earnest money deposit contingency. Uh, usually this is right in the beginning of the deal. Default is three days. And what it is, is it gives you a few days to get your, basically your security deposit, your holding deposit for buying the home into the escrow company. And that's typically wired or you can bring in a check, but most people wire it nowadays. And uh, that would be your first contingency. So essentially you have three days to bring that in. And the next contingency is probably your most important one. They actually all kind of run at the same time. Uh, is gonna be your inspection contingency, your appraisal contingency, and your loan contingency. And those are the three main ones that you'll typically see in any deal out here. First of all, your inspection contingency. That basically is the amount of time that you're given to do all investigations of the home. So that would be your home inspection, if you wanna get a chimney inspection, sewer inspection, any inspection you want contractors to come by and give you bids. Uh, that is your period of time to go ahead and do that. And essentially, it gives you a knowledge of the house, lets you know if it's in good shape, if it's in less than good shape, um, but you go into it knowing exactly what is up with the house and if it essentially is good enough for you to buy at the price that you've decided to buy it at. Uh, so that is your inspection contingency. Now, your appraisal contingency is just what it sounds like. It's the time that your lender has uh, to get an appraisal on the property. Now, the bank typically requires an appraisal just because they wanna make sure that the amount you're offering on the house is worth it to them if they're gonna give a loan on it. So the appraiser comes out during that time, puts together a report, and then it, when everything's said and done, you can remove your appraisal contingency. Now, the third thing that's running, it usually takes a couple days longer than the others, is the loan contingency. And when you first put an offer on a home, you already have pre-approval, essentially. The lender has run your credit, they've seen your basic financials, so they've given you what's called a pre-approval or a pre-qualification. Um, what this does is this gives the lender time during escrow for you to submit additional paperwork, find out more details about the house and your financial picture, and basically makes it so you can get your final loan approval and be able to get the loan for the house. So that contingency usually is the last one to get removed. Uh, it's one of the most important. Uh, if you're a cash buyer, obviously you're not dealing with the loan contingency since you don't need to get a loan. Uh, so those are the contingencies, those are the most important ones, and um, if you have any others you have questions about, feel free to comment below. Once again, be sure to like and subscribe our channel. Thank you for visiting, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.